guys, today we have a cool episode. You'll learn about the history of money and how money is actually made. Let's go. The history of money. Did you know that people invented money much earlier than number systems? The reason for this was that there were no numbers and people had to memorize who owed how much to whom. An excellent assistant for ancient people in this case was a pile of shells and shiny stones. But it was only the beginning, the very start of a thorny and long way to modern money. Before coins, by the way, all sellers used the system of barter. As a rule, important consumer items could be offered for exchange. In some societies, these were sugar, furs, elephant bones, and cocoa, while in others they were shells, beads, allspice, and tobacco leaves. Such exchange had its disadvantages, as it was difficult to objectively determine the value of a particular commodity. For example, it was impossible to say exactly how many sacks of grain should be given for one sheep. The history began in China. It was there that the first coins with square holes inside appeared. They were needed so that it was possible to string money on a string and carry it in large quantities without discomfort. Such a standard string of money could weigh more than seven pounds. It was already the 9th century, interregional trade was developing, and merchants were finding it increasingly difficult to manage this kind of money. Carrying numerous strings was far from easy, so the government took the following measures. It decided that merchants could hand the strings over to the state and in return receive notes of a special sample. In our understanding, these are the first banknotes in history. At first, the merchants were happy about this innovation. But then a problem with the reverse exchange was discovered. They could be exchanged, but the government kept a 10% fee for storing the copper coins. This is what led to the fact that banknotes did not become instantly widespread. Meanwhile, it was 1023, and China was becoming a monopoly in the issue of money. Of course, this would not have happened without proper anti-counterfeiting protection. The paper, from which the state made banknotes at that time, was made from the bark of the mulberry tree to increase wear resistance. Banknotes were already made of different colors in those days to reduce the risk of creating fakes. Everything seemed to be going very well, but the government forgot to take care of the value of the banknotes. As a result, the money soon lost a thousand percent of its value, and new ones were issued instead. In Europe, things were slower because there were no ties with China. There, the first analog of paper money was the depository receipts of banks confirming the storage of a certain number of coins on the owner's account. Nevertheless, money could still easily lose its value if the bank that printed it went bankrupt. And this happened very, very often in those days. Time did not stop for a moment. There were constant reforms, changes in printing rules, appearance of denominations. In general, the monetary structure was developing on all fronts. And at one point it reached its peak, as it seemed. Money moved from the natural to the virtual dimension. The prehistory of the most famous form of cashless money, plastic credit cards, began in 1888 when Edward Bellamy, in his book Looking Backward, 2000 to 1887, put forward the idea of a card that could be used to pay in stores. The theory was put in practice a few decades later. The first cards were ordinary paper and metal cards, which were issued by American commercial companies, stores, oil companies, and hotels. Such cards could be obtained only by reliable and creditworthy clients who had been using the company's services and goods for a long time. The main purpose of this new thing was to track what, when, and with what frequency a customer bought something. At the very end of the 19th century, the first traveler's check appeared, which could be used to pay for travel. The first card, which we all know very well, was made in 1960. It appeared with a magnetic stripe, which served as an electronic memory. Plastic cards owe their popularity to American Express, which, in a year after the card was issued, brought the number of its owners to 470,000 individuals. Banks noticed all the excitement around the new system and began to repeat it, putting their cards into mass production. The main bank gives license to other banks and encourages the establishment of the NBI Society, which would later become known as the Visa Payment System money on a plastic card. What could be even cooler? However, for many people, storing money in such carriers has already become the past century. NFC payment system came to replace plastic payment method in 2004. The technology of wireless data transfer between devices located at a distance of up to four inches. It's thanks to it that we can put our phone, which is always at hand, 
put it on the terminal of the checkout and not poking around in our bag looking for cash or a card holder. There are also more futuristic things. For example, a payment ring or technological chips, which confident people sew into their hands and pay with a simple touch, like magicians. It may seem that all this plays in favor of customers only, but banks also benefit. The fact is that in the past, in order to buy something you needed, you had to stand in line, replenish your balance, wait for the money to arrive, and only then head to the store. Today, all these payments are instantaneous. You've just received your salary and you can immediately put your payment ring to the card reader and be sure that the purchase will be successful. What do you think will happen to money in 100 years or at least 50 years? Share your guesses in the comments. Knowing history is always good and very important, but how is money made in the first place? If you thought it was made from ordinary paper, you are sorely and deeply mistaken. The production of money is an incredibly complex and unusual process. Banknotes, having come into use, are passed from hand to hand a number of times. It's not difficult to understand that they must be very strong in order to not be torn up after just a few usages. Therefore, for the production of banknotes, they do not use simple wood pulp, but add fibers of cotton and flax during the manufacture. With such a composition, the fiber is not only less susceptible to rapid wear and tear, but also does not fade because there are far less acids. All these manipulations lead to the fact that a banknote can be kept in perfect condition for more than two years. Before the paper is put into production, the raw material is held under high pressure, cleaned, clarified, then pressed and softened. At the stage when the paper is still wet, watermarks and the characteristic hue of certain banknotes are applied. All of this is formed during the paper casting process, which creates an additional protection that's incredibly difficult to replicate. Embossing allows you to make drawings that are invisible to the eye. Paint is not used in this case, special foil is used for embossing. The resulting image can either be touched or seen from a certain angle. Then perforation takes place, for which a laser is used. Thanks to the same method, numbers are stamped on the banknotes. Today, almost all countries in the world use 10 bright colors in the production of banknotes, and only in the United States the bills have a gray, green, or blue shade. Here's an interesting fact. How do you think the person that's put on dollar bills is chosen? Why not put a modern president or someone else on it? The whole point, it turns out, is an unspoken rule according to which it is forbidden to use images of living people on dollar bills. And also the design of the bill remains unchanged since the beginning of the 20th century. All papers have the same size and differ only in denomination and the portrait. By the way, do you know what bill is most often counterfeited? It turns out a dollar bill, especially $100 bills. But what no one wants to counterfeit is Tonino's wooden money. The thing is that it's made of the most short-lived material, wood. But at the same time, it somehow magically retains its appearance for a long time. Probably in the process of production, people have discovered some secret, which they're not in a hurry to share with the rest of the world. What do you think is the smallest banknote on Earth? It turns out that it's the Ten Bani note, which appeared in Romania in 1917. It had a size of 1.08 by 1.49 inches. Why do I keep talking about paper alone? Let's also recollect the coins. If earlier the process of the production was manual, today their minting is fully automated. First, a sketch is developed on paper, then a three-dimensional model is created with the help of computer technology. It's molded from silicone. When it hardens, this particular negative is filled with epoxy resin. After the resin hardens, the silicone is removed and the mold is ready. Then, on a special machine, the image is transferred to a steel stamp. Round planchets are cut from a thick rod. Before the image is applied on the front and back sides, the edges are processed, applying inscriptions and notches. The planchet is red hot cooled, etched, and polished to a shine. Special machines are used for embossing. The pattern is applied to both sides simultaneously. As I mentioned earlier today, the most popular bill among counterfeiters is $100. According to statistics for 2015, there was at least one counterfeit buck for every $10,000. Moreover, people counterfeit $100 bills mainly outside the United States. There are many variations of counterfeiting. They differ in quality and the means that go for it. The simplest is considered to be the inkjet printer method. It'll turn out to be a low-grade counterfeit, which will be distinguished even by not the most attentive person. Color laser printer is better, but when viewed, especially with a magnifying glass, it's clear that there are no watermarks. The counterfeit will be revealed immediately. 
raise the stakes and move on, and here we have silk screen printing. It's famous for a large number of bumps and volumetric drawings, or rather, you know, too many bumps. That's why it's easy to distinguish such a bill by touch, even though it meets all the requirements. The last option is offset printing. It combines all the best, and only a professional can distinguish a counterfeit bill from a real one. That's all, guys. What fact about money did you find most interesting? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching, and see you later.